Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And today's product is an example of a Rep Fitness third wave product. And I don't mean that their third waves are equal, I just mean that they've gone through three different variations of improvement, and I think this is a version showing their best and through a third version, even though this is called the 2.0. This is the Rep Adjustable Bench AB3000 2.0. This is one of Rep's longest living benches. It's actually their longest living adjustable bench. I used this one when it came out very first, like nearly a decade ago. This is their 2.0. They've had other iterations and upgrades over time, but this one takes a trusted, they call a classic design, because it is classic, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but they take that design and they've improved it in some ways that they say, and maybe some downgrades in others. I'll talk about that maybe a little bit later on. Let's get into it. Okay, this bench was sent to us, just so you know, by Rep Fitness. I like to let all of our audience know this on every video for transparency. They sent it to us free of charge for a review, but as you'll see, like all of our videos, it's gonna be my Coop's opinion, honest take. Okay, so it'll be good and bad. Also, if you'd like to purchase this, check out the link below the like button. That will be an affiliate link. It supports us. If you like the content we make, please continue to support us because that's what allows us to be able to do this. Also, if you buy it, the company will pay us a small commission. You won't have to pay anything additional, and I thank you. Okay, this is the AB3000 2.0. And as I said kind of in the intro, this is a third wave product for Rep Fitness. And this is what I mean by that specifically for Rep Fitness. When Rep first came out with the AB3000, which I've reviewed in depth in a past video. If you wanna see an old coupe, you can check out that video. It is an oldie, but I just wasn't as good back then. Or maybe I was, maybe those were the golden years. Maybe I'm not as good today. I don't know, let me know in the comments. Actually don't, please don't. But for this example, when I reviewed that one, that was a bench that I think, and Rep may take offense to this, but this is my honest opinion, I think that was a bench they got off the shelf and put their name on. And I think you can see that because there's a lot of variations of that bench. Companies that are importing products oftentimes are not making a ton of changes to the products because they don't know how they'll sell, especially when you're early on in the business. And so you're just taking a product from a catalog and putting your name on it and then shipping it out. We see this with a lot of companies. And that's the reason that the original Rep AB3000, you see that style a bench, not just the style, but pretty much the same bench from a bunch of different companies. For instance, Titan, they sell an adjustable bench that looks the exact same as the old AB3000 from Rep with a different logo on it, the Titan logo. Vulcan, they've got a similar bench as well. And there's other companies out there, Frenchport, others as well that have a very similar design as that. So then what Rep decided to do was we'll keep the general design, but we'll improve some of the touch points. So examples of that is they improved the vinyl. So they went with a more grippy vinyl than that cheap, glossy, thin, slick, pleather looking vinyl that you see on all really cheap, crappy benches. It's just not good. It feels awful. It's bad to bench on. It doesn't last. I don't recommend it. So they're like, we'll change that to their second version, which is a more grippy top. Like if you look at Rep's current product design, they're coming out with a lot of innovative stuff. An example is the Aries and the PR5000. Like they're not just coming out with, you know, looking online for a product catalog and saying, we want that, put our logo on that. No, they're saying, we're gonna rebuild this stuff from the ground up. And this is a version of what I would say is the 3.0 or is the third wave. This one is, let's improve as much as we can about it. So let's not only add the colors and the badges and some of our design features, but let's also improve the functionality so it works better, still has the same design ethos of what people liked in the past, but in an attempt to make it overall functionally better. Now, the question is, did they achieve that? And I'll get to that answer at the end of this video, but I'm gonna have to walk through all the changes that they've made in this and then compare it to some of the other options. So let me just start with the design 
of the bench. First off, they've increased the stability of this bench and a goal to make it more stable when you're using it in the various versions. So they've increased the width on the back. And so I'm starting on the back just so we can move forward. And the reason that that is nice is because you'll be using this as both an adjustable bench and an incline as well as a flat bench. But the reason that this thing is so popular is because it's an FID bench. It also goes decline. Now personally, just so you know, I don't use the decline option that much. When I'm testing them, I use it, but in my normal day-to-day -day training, decline is just not a movement I'm doing a ton. If I'm gonna do a decline, I'm often using it for like sit-ups or things like that, but in order to give you my opinion on it, I want to test it. This one has a decline of 12 degrees, so negative 12. It goes down 12 degrees, which I think is pretty good. You know, there are benches, if you go to a commercial gym, they may be more around negative 15, but negative 12, I think for an adjustable bench that still has all the adjustments both up and down, I think works well. So this back piece has been extended, so it has extra stability. The reason that matters is because the front piece is a tripod design. So the, most of the stability is coming from the back piece and then there's essentially a post with a flat plate on the front. And I'll get to that here in a little bit. There's also wheels on the back and these wheels are designed so you can maneuver it around. Any adjustable bench worth its salt, because they're heavy, they should have wheels on the back so you can move them. And then there's a handle, a redesigned handle, and I'll let you know what I think about that in a moment as well, that's on the front so you can lift it up and move it, maneuver it around. Now there are seven adjustments on the ladder system and an additional one on the decline. So there's eight total back pad positions that you can put this in, all the way from negative 12 degrees, which is this decline option, all the way, da, 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 impending doom, up to 85 degrees. 85 degrees is superior in my opinion and most manufacturers' opinions to 90 degrees. The reason is because doing a completely vertical seated overhead press is just not possible for most people's lack of mobility because they're always doing this. Maybe do less of this, except if you're watching me. But that ladder system is actually laser cut from zero degrees up to 85 degrees, just like their higher end benches. So a nice feature that honestly, most benches at this price point don't offer. Being able to know the degrees at each increment is very nice. I love that addition is an example of rep being able to redesign completely the bench so it's superior for everybody's use. Also, other details. A lot of times these are metal on metal, especially at this price point. Well, reps decided let's put some plastic on there, basically so that it makes less noise when they're moving it up, but also so there's no metal on metal contact. You got a really beautiful blue on this. They've got offer red and other colors as well. I think the blue really stands out, especially if you can match it with your rack. And you don't want to scratch that up because you've paid good money for it. So having plastic on the different components so it's not metal on metal is nice. So also probably just add some extra stability. Another Another thing to notice is they're using nice components throughout. So they're using tight tolerances with nice bushings and washers. So there's not a ton of side to side movement between the bench pad. Some of the cheaper benches and some of their previous versions, like this just moved more than you would like. You'll notice there's some movement, but honestly, like if you tighten this down, maybe a little bit more. And actually now that I'm looking at it, it's more coming from that fat, flat foot plate, there's very little side movement on this. Like this is very tight tolerances, which again, just shows another higher end level of equipment than some of previous rep benches like the original AB3000 that shook a lot more. I mean, that's even at the highest height. Now, when I'm moving like that, that's like, there's no weight on this, but when I'm actually on it, like, quite stable. Maybe not as stable as the really high end benches, but it's not a pop pin system either. It's a ladder system, which always has more side to side play. So I think that's actually kind of impressive. Now, moving up the bench. This is the bench top, the back pad specifically. And I wanna talk about a couple things with this. Number one is the foam that's used. Now, the foam on this feels more dense than previous versions. It's actually a very nice foam. If the foam is firm, but it's comfortable. I like a firmer top. A bench I really like is the Prime Fitness Adjustable Bench, but one reason I really don't like it is because the top is so soft. When you're benching 700, 800 pounds, you really want to be able to have a firm top to push against. So when I'm lifting that weight as a warm-up weight, I wanna make sure it feels great when I'm using in it and this one does. But another thing you wanna make sure if you're lifting lots of weight is you wanna make sure you're able to drive into the bench, able to feel secure driving against that bench without slipping. That's where this vinyl comes in. This is the best vinyl I've used from Rep. 
they originally, they were one of the first ones to come out with like a grippy type top versus like Rogue's Thompson Fat Pad, which by the way, the vinyl on the Thompson Fat Pad is still the best. This is not as good as that, but man, it is close. It's one of the best that I've used personally on any of the adjustable benches that are out there, but I digress. This bench top pad, the vinyl on here is vastly better than the previous vinyl. And this is another example of rep a more third wave product. This is a better top all around. And then we move to the seat pad. The seat pad is adjustable. You can flip it around if you'd like to. Some people like this adjustment. The reason you like this is because you're using these adjustable foot rollers a lot for decline because this feels more comfortable underneath your knees. But if you don't like it, want it to be more like a traditional adjustable bench where it curves out the other way, this is actually, you can just unbolt it and flip it around, which I think is a cool feature. And has five adjustment positions from flat up. So when you're in the decline position or you're in an incline position and want a little bit more security, you're able to move this up and it moves with a pop pin. So the front is actually not a ladder, which I like because when you're doing decline, you're gonna be moving a lot and you're also gonna be putting some torque on this. So if you had a ladder system, you may pick it up off the ladder. The pop pin is really ideal. It's a very smooth moving ladder. So the pop pin feels very good. It's a nice spring action. You just pull it, adjust, and then it'll pop back in. And that's why they call it pop pin because it just sounds really good like a pop and also pops back. Then we have the rollers. And this is a point of contention, I think, for a lot of people, the look of this bench, and I agree. This bench just aesthetically is not as pretty of a bench as the old version. It's just not. And I think the reason that it's not as pretty is this thing right here and also the tooth gap right here. <laughs> so if we're looking at a bench and the bench is smiling, this is the front two teeth, right? Can you put a gap between my teeth, editor? Yeah. That looks real good. Yeah, that's what this is. This is, a, this is the gap. And the thinner the gap, the better. Like, you just don't want a huge gap here because when you're benching flat, it feels uncomfortable. And this bench pad, although has pretty good length, it's not as long as, say, their AB5200, which is really long in length, and you can use it as just a standard flat pad. I'm not super tall, but I, I like, if I'm gonna bench on this, I kind of have to be just perfectly positioned, and even then I can kind of feel the gap there. I think for most people, you're gonna be fine on it, but I think you're gonna feel some of that gap. You're just gonna have to if you're flat benching on it. I wish they would have made the top maybe just a little bit longer, but this gap is not good. Like it's just too thick, but it's just part of the design. It kind of has to be that way. It's not like they added that just to make it more difficult and not be as good as their higher end benches. It has to be that way because when you're coming up to incline, and you're also throwing this up there, like you can see it gets removed. If that gap wasn't there, you'd probably have some compression between the pad. You can maybe move it a little bit closer, but it's kind of just part of the design and the engineering, it has to be that way. So this leg roller though, talking about the aesthetics, I think is the ugly piece. And I think it has some positives, but it also has some negatives. So here's the positive. One is this is adjustable. So it's not just a fixed leg roller that maybe has one or two positions. So this adjusts up and down in these little hole increments. And the way that they're adjusting is using this pin. Now, just to speak on this briefly, I hate this pin. I really do. I hate pieces that are made to be permanent that you can lose a piece. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna be using this thing all the time. You're probably gonna be adjusting this all the time, which means you're gonna be pulling this out all the time. I would love it if it was able to be like a pop pin or some other design that you could adjust it without using this pin. Now I understand there's a benefit here and the benefit is you're able to adjust it in different increments. So depending on how you're using it, whether you're using it for different femur lengths so different people, or you're using it for decline or sit-ups, it has benefits that it can be used in the different increments. But I do think, personally, I think it looks ugly, and I don't think this functions with this pin very well. I certainly don't think it's a deal breaker. Like, there is so much good about this bench, but just for my honest opinion, like, I, I do not like this pin. Okay, but this is how it works. If you wanna adjust between the different increments, this allows you to use it right here. And I don't think this would be another additional 
that's necessary. It just kind of would have been nice if they would have marked these with an increment. I don't think it needs to be degrees, but you could do like C-O-O-P-E-R. Yeah, that would work. So if that was Cooper, that would be kind of cool. But no, if they put like stars there, I don't know, some increment to let you know where you're at. I think it would have been a nice addition, but it may have increased the cost a little bit and probably is not worth it for most people because this is more of a value bench, which I'll get to the price in a moment. So this locks in. Now, one thing I'd love your opinion on because this thing came with two pins. It comes with one right here and one right here. And these holes right here, I can't figure out what these holes are for. I don't know if they're just to store the pins. The, this is the reason I see why you'd have two pins is maybe you lose one, then you have the other. Another option is on this, there's a cutout on either side. So technically you could place a pin maybe for extra security. You could place one on this side of it and then you could place one on this side and that locks it in. But I don't know why you would do that versus just placing it in the middle hole because it's more secure and it only uses one pin. So if you know, let me know in the comments why there's two pins. Couldn't figure it out on their site. I honestly have no idea. But the other thing is this allows you to potentially store this roller out of the way right here. So then it's out of the way when you're benching flat, which it is out of the way more than the previous design. But I do want to say if you're using it like this, it may, you may still kick it a little bit, you know, like it's still there. So you may have to adjust your setup. So maybe you're benching behind it, which can feel kind of comfortable because you have something to push against, but it's not going to feel as comfortable as a bench that doesn't have rollers because they're going to be somewhat in the way all the time. But I do like the way they designed that and came up with it. Now the rollers feature the same vinyl and similar foam. They're softer than what's on the bench pad. They feel comfortable. The vinyl is going to last. It's very grippy. Same as the top. Really well done. Now, one other thing to talk about is this flat foot plate on the front. This flat foot plate is nice because it's wide, so it will add extra and more stability. This one is bigger and wider, and it's also very flat. The rubber is nice because it's gonna add some extra grip and also protect your flooring and the bench, but it also adds a little bit extra lip. But regardless, it's not taking a lot, up a lot of space, and I think it's a pretty good design idea to make it wider so it'll have extra stability on the front because there are people you know, that maybe haven't used it a ton or whatever where they're just sitting up here and it's going to move around a little bit on them but it will move less because the plate is wider okay so that's the bench that's the rep ab3000 2.0 let me give you kind of my take i've given it throughout but let me give you like my pros and cons first the value on this i think the value for this under 350 bucks because it's 320 bucks i think this is one of the highest value benches that there is the rep ab3000 1.0 already was that like it was just a very good value bench it's the reason you see them in lots of gyms because it does both incline flat and decline it's a true fid bench which i know a lot of people like so that provides a lot of value in addition to that like this is a reworked design like this is unique to rep and has a lot of good features that other products don't like the really nice foam the really nice vinyl the multiple adjustment option options with laser cut the wide front foot plate also the adjustable roller it just has some things that like it's not a crazy different bench than the previous version, but it is a much better iteration. Like it's a very good jump and they're offering their other one on sale, the old one, until they probably sell out of it for like 40 bucks less than this one. And I'd still definitely go with this one. So for 320 shipped, you get a bench that is really well made with powder coat. And I think it's just really well done. Another pro on it is the roller. So having the roller so you can do decline and put your feet under and move it out of the way, I think is a nice design iteration. I'm gonna say some cons, but overall, if you're in this price point, the other benches you're looking at are either from Rep, so you're looking at their AB3100. This is a better option. I like this one better than 3100. I'm looking at it right now. It, that does not look nearly the quality as this one. The AB4100, which I'm looking at over here, which is a nice bench, and I like that one better than this one, unless you really want decline, then this one works well. I don't use decline a lot, so that's why I like that one. And that one has a stand-up feature, but this one's also 80 bucks less. And then you have companies like Iron Master, which is making a great bench, but again, 
again, more expensive. Rogue, again, more expensive. Vulcan, I don't think their offerings are any more unique than say what Titan's offering with their current offerings. And both of those are just okay and not that much less than this. So within this price point, this thing is a freaking winner. Now that doesn't mean everything is the best. Number one, on the cons, I do think it's kind of ugly. <laughs> like the buck teeth, the wide gap pad, also the roller functionality, this, the pop pins, I do not like these. Um, I just think the overall look of it, aesthetically, it's not that great looking. But I do understand if you just want something that all you're thinking about is function, this is a very well-functioning bench. But the aesthetics, I think it's just not that pretty. But Another thing is the gap pad. If you really are doing a lot of flat bench and this is gonna be your flat bench, you're not gonna have a dedicated flat bench, you're gonna to have to get used to that gap pad because options like their AB4100 or their 5000 Zero Gap have much less gap or options from other companies. That's really one of the biggest downsides to this bench. But on the flip side, you have decline where a lot of those other benches don't. And then lastly, one thing about this and it's part of the design iteration is it doesn't have a stand-up feature. <laughs> And that's something we're like so used to in the home gym community at this point is having a stand-up feature. So being unable to grab this handle down here, lift it up and set it back is like, it just doesn't like, you can store it like that, like it obviously can, but I would not feel comfortable with that in my garage because this flips out like, these are on, it could eventually just tip back. It's just, it's not designed for it. It's not meant to be used in this way. They don't market it in that way. It obviously can stand up in like this A-frame, but again, I'm just showing you that it can. I would not recommend it. So if you're wanting to save space when you're not using your bench, being able to put it up on the wall, it's really nice. And then lastly, this is both a positive and a negative. The positive is it's pretty heavy at 89 pounds, which means it's pretty stable. The negative is it's pretty heavy and so it's a little bit difficult to move around. And because most of the weight is on the front, like this carriage here is a ton of metal, like this is where most of the weight's sitting. It feels more difficult to move than a bench of the same weight where the weight was distributed more on the backside where you can move it easily. So a little bit annoying, you know, I don't think it's like a deal breaker, but if you know, you're not very strong, it's just a little annoying to move around where something like the AB4100 feels really good moving around. Okay, there's my take, honest, in depth, is there anything I missed? Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this one versus the many other myriad of rep benches? Man, they have so many benches or other options that are out there. But man, 320 bucks for this. I think that, honestly, I think that's a really good price. Like that is, that's a sick bench for that price. Anytime you spend money, there's gives and takes. Um, but I think overall, they've chosen the right path. Okay, are you choosing the right path? Are you subscribed to GGR? If you're not, you should. This coupe from Garage and Reviews. We will see you next time. Peace.